In this video, we are going to look at how to perform a multi-concept search in the CINAHL database and use filters for the most relevant results. The CINAHL database allows you to use Boolean searching, which provides a lot of control over your search, and that is very valuable when you're searching through thousands of articles for the best clinical evidence. The term Boolean refers to the three connecting words, and, or, and not, which we can use to create relationships between keywords. For example, searching for depression and postpartum will limit my results to only articles that include both of those keywords together. Searching for depression or anxiety will expand my results and I will see articles about depression in many populations and I will also see articles about anxiety in a lot of different populations. Searching for depression not postpartum will target my results to only articles that are about depression, but it will remove anything related to postpartum alone and depression and postpartum together. And as we search in CINAHL in this video, you'll see more examples of how these connectors can be used to craft an effective search. We can get to CINAHL from the library homepage at library.pace.edu by clicking on the databases tab and then C for CINAHL. We're now on the page with all of the databases that begin with C, and we can scroll down and click on the link for CINAHL. On the main search page, we will see three search boxes. For searches with more than one concept, we want to use a separate box for each term. Let's say that we are searching for articles about using telehealth or technology tools to improve outcomes for young adults with type 2 diabetes. Before we start searching in CINAHL, we wanna think about what the main concepts are to select the ones that we will put into the search boxes. So the most important terms are diabetes, adolescence, and telehealth. In the first box, we can type in diabetes. And in the second box, we can type in adolescence. And notice that the boxes are connected with the AND Boolean operator telling the database to only return articles with both of these concepts. And then lastly, we'll type in our third concept of telehealth, again, connecting with the AND operator. And we can click search. So we have 34 results with all three of those concepts connected. But what if there are articles where the author used a synonym for those terms uh, and not those terms exactly? They wouldn't appear in these results. So we can use the OR Boolean operator to add potential keywords and expand the number of relevant articles. So for each concept, we can add related keywords. For diabetes, we can type in OR and then add in type two or diabetes mellitus type two or diabetes two. So these are all ways that those terms might show up in a research article, and we're trying to capture all of them. For adolescents, we could do teenagers or young adults. And lastly, we could do telehealth or telemedicine, or we are also trying to think of the, the clinical question involves technology tools, so we could do cell phones or mobile apps. And while mobile apps or cell phones are not synonyms for telehealth, if I think about my original question, they do uh, the, discuss that using that type of technology. And so I may want to at least review articles with those in it. And before we click search, two more strategies we can use uh, with these searches are called truncation and quotation marks. So with truncation, you can shorten a word and replace the letters with an asterisk. This tells the database to bring back results with any form of that word. So for example, I could put an asterisk at the end of cell in case the article talks about cellular phones. Um, I could also put it at the end of app take out the S and hopefully that would capture articles with application or apps. Again, we're looking for articles that might've been missed by not using the exact synonym. And then quotation marks can be used to be more precise with our phrase keywords. 
So for example, the phrase young adults without quotation marks might bring back articles with the word young in paragraph one and adults a few paragraphs later. And then this impacts the overall subject of the article in a negative way for my needs. So if I put it in quotation marks, I will get articles that only have that back as a phrase. So I've also gone in and used quotation marks on diabetes mellitus, uh, cell phone and mobile app. And I'm gonna click search. So now we have 100 articles in our search results. And again, that's because we have expanded the potential keywords that could be available in the articles in our results. So the last operator we haven't looked at yet is the not operator. It can be helpful, but it's not always applicable to many searches. For example, I could click the plus sign to add a new search box and drop this down and select not. And I could include the word video here, which would exclude any of these 100 articles that has the word video in it. If I search, it has removed about eight articles, but those are eight articles that I don't have to look through if removing video is applicable to my clinical question and helps me narrow my focus. Before we start really digging into the articles and our results, we can use some limiters on the left side to just remove some articles that we know won't be useful. So we can start with the date and limit to 2019 for the past five years. And this will make sure that we have the most up-to-date information. And now we're down to 50 articles, but we know that they're very recent. The full text checkbox seems like it would be helpful to bring back articles that I know are the entire article, but I'll explain later why that might not always be helpful. And in this case, checking off the box for academic journals doesn't do very much for our search because there's only one magazine article, but let's say there were 10 books, there were 35 magazines, maybe there were 55 clinical reports, right? I can check the box for academic journals that to limit to just those and remove those other extraneous results. Another thing that sometimes is helpful is geography. If I know that I would like only articles that are in say the United States and Europe, or am I interested in other regions around the world? Another way to use the limiters is before we do our search. So I can click on advanced search and I can go back here and there's a few more options that are not available on the left side. For example, I can check off English language. I can also check off peer reviewed and peer reviewed articles are articles that have gone through a special editing process in which experts in that specialty area have read it in order to check for problems with the methods or the analysis and then provided feedback to the author to update. You're not limited to using peer-reviewed articles unless your professor says so. However, those may be considered more authoritative because they've gone through that review process. Uh, I can also check off articles listed as uh, or categorized as evidence-based practice and I have some other options down here related to the research participants, language, other languages other than English, and geography. So now we can start reviewing these articles to see if they're relevant, if we need to go back and change some of our search results, and then try to look for full text. We can start with the title. So this is called Healthcare Coaching Program for Youth with Type 1 Diabetes in South Korea. Underneath that, we see the author names, the year and month it was published and the uh, journal name of where it was published. So this is Child Health Nursing Research. And that gives us some context about what the focus of the study is going to be. And that's reinforced by the subjects down below that this is about um, diabetic patients and adolescents between the ages of 13 and 18. And the abstract provide us, provides us with a summary of what the article is going to talk about. So before we even click into it, we can get to see if it answers our questions. And you'll notice in bold are our keywords that we've put up into the search boxes. And once we have checked to see which articles we'd like to read more about, we can try to find the full text to read more about the evidence. You'll notice under each article, either a PDF full text icon, sometimes there might be an HTML full text, uh, and sometimes there will be a gray search for item button. And these links all help us locate the full text. So for the first article, we have access in a PDF format. 
The PDF viewer helps us to see how the article looks in publication. And this is helpful for being able to see the distinct sec sections of the article, um, see the abstract and see what it would look in a, in a journal. On the right side, you'll see helpful tools like a print button, a citation button, and from here you can find your citation type and copy and paste it into a reference page or a document. We also have an export button if you're using a citation manager like EndNote or Zotero, and also a permanent link. So this is the link that you would wanna to use to get back to access this article because it includes our subscription information and our password information for this database. The link in the address bar will not include that information and it will take you back to a search page. And there's also uh, a print and download button right on the PDF viewer. For articles with the search for item button, the database will either try to locate the full text in another database or on the web and link you out. Or in this case, it will take you to an interlibrary loan link. In this case, we don't have full text of the article and you would need to just click to this link to request the article through our interlibrary loan service called Iliad. So it is going to fill out the article request for you and then you can click submit and you would receive a copy of the article to your PACE email in a few days. So these abstracts that are in our database are a good reason why using the full text button might not always be valuable. If we had checked that box, this article would not appear in our search and we wouldn't know to request it through interlibrary loan. If you need an article immediately, that is when checking the full text box is the most helpful. And now you might be asking yourself, why couldn't I just put diabetes and adolescence and telehealth can combine together in the first box and use the first results that come up? And that could work, but we have to remember that we're not just looking for four or five random articles, we are looking for the best evidence. So creating a search like this may take a couple of more minutes and considering our limiters and the relationships between words, but we know that we are getting evidence that is most relevant to our clinical question. And once you start collecting articles from this list that you would like to keep, you want to consider putting them in some type of spreadsheet or a document. So you could consider a spreadsheet like this one where you collect the database, the date found, the citation, a summary of the article, and then comments that will help you remember why that had the best evidence. Or you can sign up for and use the folders in an EBSCO account. So you can click on sign in, click on sign up, and then fill out the form to create your free account. Once you're signed in, you can click the blue folder next to any article, and then go up to folder and you'll see in the articles on the left side, you'll have a list of the articles that you've saved on the page. And when you're crafting searches like these that can be a little more complex, you can also save your search. So click on search history underneath the search boxes and you can select to save any of the searches that we've done, but the most recent one with all of our keywords, combinations and our limiters would be the best. And then you can click save searches. We can give it a name and then click save. And that will also appear up here in our CINAHL folder on the left under saved searches. And from here, I'm able to retrieve the search or edit it. And for more information on searching CINAHL, you can check out our beginner video and uh, advanced searching videos along with our DNP nursing research playlist on YouTube. If you have any questions about using CINAHL, visit the library homepage at library.pace.edu to request assistance on the bottom right from our chat service or by clicking the help menu at the top and making an appointment with a librarian.